Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days. For today's second video, day 10 will take us to the 6th of April. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS. You see them on subbles. They run throughout the couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS B2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us into the second half of April. I'll get some back for you in a moment. Just say that first. The video says our 6th UK weather forecast. Please like, share, subscribe on both of today's bids. Thank you so much everyone for doing Doing that around 90 subscribers gets us to 18.19.7k, uh, I should say. <laughs> uh, so, please give us a thank you so much for doing that. Running very late today with today's 10 to 14 days, so let's crack on. Gonna start off with late with that from Earth No School.net showing uh, that uh, we've got low pressure coming into the northwest Scotland along an active weather front as well. That's been a lot of heavy rain through Scotland and Ireland. That will push south east across the countryside, but a lot of the rain will fizzle out. Out when it gets into the south and southeast, so for the time being, the dry spell continues really in the south. Central temperature is currently sitting at 7.6, that's 2 degrees above 61 to 90, average, and it's provisional to yesterday to the 26th of March, turning into a very mild month. These were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles next couple of weeks. We're going to Maidstone today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average or Maidstone. Starting off above average with the upper air temperatures right now. They're going to be coming down though over the uh, next few days and turn colder. And that only lasts very briefly though. Uh, and then we lift the upper air temperatures up through the course of next week. Actually, next week looking quite mild. What happened to the uh, what happened to the cold snap? The first week of April looking quite mild. Up there, bit of a cooling trend. It's a uh, very extended range gets into the second week of April, and it was always the second week of April that looked like it could be the uh, coolest or the coldest period. Just have a quick look at the uh, ECM ensemble graph. Du -du 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 -du. Uh, and go to north. So uh, ECM uh, operation um, quite extreme today. So through next week, it lifts up into almost summer-like conditions with uh, upper air temperatures going between 15 and 10 degrees, or 10 to 15 degrees at 850 HPA. And then it does a real uh, plunge, a plummet, and it goes into winter uh, later next week into the, uh, into the first weekend of April. So uh, the ECM operation running going from summer to winter, but both end of the range, it, range, it does look a bit of, bit of a synoptic outlier, I think. A uh, bit of a warm outlier up here. And that's actually a cold outlier down here, but certainly uh, within the, the coldest cluster. Now, you'll see that very entertaining ECM run <laughs> in a moment. Back to the GFS very briefly. So, as far as precipitation is concerned, well, it's going to be a lot of dry weather for Maidstone over, over the next week, 10 days. But it's more way of precipitation there. Uh, right at the very end of the graph. Of course, that's a long way off, very extended range, therefore unreliable. Most of the graph there is looking pretty dry. Temperature anomalies for the uh, next five days up to the first of April coming out above average. The six to ten day temperature anomaly is also above average. Most parts of Europe looking really mild as well, you'll notice. And the ten to fourteen day temperature anomaly also looks very mild too. And precipitation anomalies are simply drier than average for the next week. The eight to fourteen day uh, time frame getting to the tenth of April also comes out drier than average. Right, let's start going for chart data. Every so latest UK mate, Europe. Run is looking for midnight on Sunday. High pressure reaching up from the south, bringing a lot of the dry weather into south with it. And that dry, those dry conditions gradually pushed north along with southerly to southeast winds. So next week turns increasingly dry and warm. I think we could be seeing temperatures rising up into the 20s Celsius uh, next week. So 21, 22 degrees is possible. That's into the low 70s Fahrenheit. Next week, I can't. <laughs> Looks like this again. High pressure builds up from the south, from the southwest through the course of next week. The winds shift around to a southerly, southeasterly direction. So the uh, opening days of April looking dry and warm. That gets us to the third of April. A little bit more of an easterly component to the wind. Then might bring something a little bit cooler in from the east. But overall, mostly dry and warm with Icon. 
uh, next week. And uh, then the uh, KMA looks like that. Again, high pressure is in control, sitting over and to the east of Kirchhoff. You've beaten Ridge through the opening days of April. High pressure goes further northwards, though. So, uh, after a warm start to April, we then start to pull in cooler or colder uh, northeasterly winds there. So, uh, a definite cool down later on in the first week of April with the KMA. Right, let's see what GFS is doing. I think this is going to be pretty mild. So, you see high pressure building up through the early part of next week, bringing lots of dry and uh, pretty mild or quite warm weather. With that high pressure dominating all the way up to day 10, trough down to southwest might throw up some show showery rain into south and southwest uh, by day 10, 6th of April. But overall, we're high and dry. A little bit more of a north thing you there by the 8th of April. Could we'll start to bring some slightly cooler air in from the north and north things. But uh, the main story, I think, is like high pressure dominant for the next two weeks uh, with the GFS and a lot of dry weather, prolonged dry spell um, in what has already been a pretty dry spring. Uh, the GFS six then, all much of a muchness for Sunday. And then into next week, high pressure builds up from the south through the northwest Europe, dominating weather. Bring loads of dry and fine weather uh, with it. Wind shifting into that south southeast direction. So it looks pretty warm as well, I think. There is a trough out to the west, to the southwest. That might bring some showery rain into some of the western regions. Um, so, you know, day 8, 9, 10 might have a showery interlude. But basically, high pressure is in control and in the ascendancy uh, all the way up to the 12th of April, which is far as we get to with the uh, GFS today. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe, and show everyone for dear man, and why not drop a comment, let us know what you think about this, sort of my videos, content, live streams, etc, 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 and don't forget to tell your friends about Gals, well, don't subscribe to, and thank you so much everyone for dear man, 90 subscribers will get us to uh, 90.7k, so you could give us stuff, that'd be awesome, and you can consider giving a little donation to Gals, well, that would be very helpful as well, the uh, link to our PayPal page is in the description with the video, so just scroll down a little bit, you'll find uh, the link as well. But first thing you see in the description and uh, click through the uh, link, go to our PayPal page and sign to PayPal account, donate whatever you'd like to get us, whether it's, we'll give you a shout out in the vid. So, thank you so much, everyone, uh, for doing that. That's absolutely awesome. Thank you so, so much, everyone. It's able to pay for the channel and, um, you know, pay for, to pay for me to be able to do uh, the content for everyone. So, I thank you so much, everyone, uh, for uh, doing that. So we'll give you a shout out in the bits as well, of course. Right, uh, GM again, high pressure builds up for the south on Sunday, brings a lot of dry weather through the early to middle part of next week, turns increasingly warm with that as well. Later next week, high pressure sort of relocates slightly to the north, brings something a bit cooler in perhaps from the north and from the northeast, but not cold. And all the way up to day 10, high pressure dominant over and to the east of the country, bringing lots of dry, fine, and pretty warm weather. Nights could be chilly, but days will be very pleasant in a strong April sunshine. And then, and then, and then, we've got this very entertaining ECM run to have a look at, so we know what's going to happen with this one. Check this out. We find high pressure building up from the south through the uh, early to middle part of next week, shifting the wind around to a southerly, southeasterly direction. That brings up a plus 10 Celsius isotherm across the country, so a taste of summer there. Temperature certainly reaching 21, 22, maybe a little bit higher than that. I uh, wouldn't rule out a 23 perhaps if uh, we've got plenty of sunshine with that. But by the end of next week, the high pressure mode begins going to retrograde, re retrograde and pulling up towards Iceland and Greenland, starting to drop in a cooler northerly then. So we go into the first weekend of April, the 5th and the 6th, and check this out. We've lost a plus 10 cells ice sperm, and we're bringing in the minus 5 cells ice sperm into the north and the east. And as those winds turn around to the northeast by day 10, well, cold air floods across the country, and yeah, we've gone from uh, summer to winter there in about three days. So uh, that would be quite a shock, wouldn't it? Quite a dramatic change. And uh, with low pressure sitting over low countries by the 7th of April, maybe that might even start to pull in some wintry showers, possibly some snow showers into southern and eastern parts of the country. The upper air temperatures certainly look uh, supportive, uh, supportive, supportive, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, supportive, uh, 
love of that. Uh, we keep it cold and wintry then with the uh, ECM uh, midnight run all the way up to the end of it, actually. I guess it's the 10th of April, top of low over to the east, bringing the wind from the north and from the north east. That's how we finish up by the 11th of April with uh, today's ECM midnight run. Looking cold and wintry uh, there. So a very entertaining ECM run, but it didn't look particularly well supported within uh, its ensemble graph, I have to say. But it would be fun if it came off, wouldn't it? <laughs> Keep us on our toes. This is the presentation broadcast based on the ECM run. Check out, check out all of this rain into the north and the west today and tonight. That's going to come south east, but fizzle out as it does so through uh, later tonight and tomorrow morning. Go south away, then we're uh, turning mostly dry in the south over the weekend. There will be some further showery dish up in the north. Then, of course, next week, high pressure building strongly, bringing loads and loads and loads of dry weather through the course of next week. By the end of the week, perhaps some wintry shower just starting to flirt. Ooh, <laughs> Victor, uh, flirt with the East Coast. Uh, right, well, these are the options on the table within the East um, Ensembles today for day 10. The Icelandic Met Office gets us to the 6th of April. 19 members of the East um, Ensembles with a block around Greenland. Iceland, a trough to the east and bringing the wind for cold and north northeast direction. That does include the control and the operation. Where we've got 13 high pressure uh, sent into the north of Scotland. We've got some ridging down west side of Europe. That brings a lot of dry weather with it. We've got 8 with high pressure between Iceland and Norway. Around that, we bring the wind in from the uh, east. That's been mostly dry and very pleasant, I would have thought. We've got seven with high pressure around Greenland ice, and that could bring the wind in from the northeast direction. And we've got four with high pressure right over the top of the country there. So, uh, a range watch, they're all involving high pressure, and the exact placement of high pressure as ever with high pressure is the critical factor. If high goes far, far enough north, uh, you know, further north towards Greenland and whatnot, but not, then we'll start to bring the cold air in from uh, the northeast. But if high sort of uh, stays around the country, which is what the GFS is kind of showing, uh, then then we just keep it uh, quite, uh, quite well, keep it dry, but probably pretty warm. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It will get us to the 11th of April. We've got 17 members of the East Sherman ensembles but with high pressure again centered around Greenland and a trough of low pressure is to our east that brings the wind in from a cold north northeasterly uh, direction potentially and they've got 17 again high pressure blocking way to the northeast but much more way of low pressure through the west Europe so uh, not only quite cold with winds coming in from the north and from the northeast but also quite wintry 17 and 17 is a pretty strong majority actually a bit of further 17 Interesting, uh, with high pressure uh, through the uh, west of Europe. And again, that's kind of like the GFS solution, which is kicked high pressure first game and is not particularly uh, cold. But these two options, they're not all that far removed from one another. 17 there, but 17 there. So the majority option is actually going towards a, a colder a scenario into the, uh, in, in, into the second week of April. Uh, before then, though, uh, around the day 10 period, uh, it's a case of where that high pressure is sitting. CFS B2 finally, but I don't think many of your ensemble members are as extreme as the operation running going from summer uh, to winter uh, within a couple of days. <laughs> uh, finally got CFS, uh, so these are 500 millibar high dominoes and they're breaking down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 27th of March to the 2nd of April. Next week with high pressure ridging in to the south and southwest, low pressure way to the northwest and winds are coming in from the west to southwest direction. Mostly dry and quite mild or even warm with back to them. And then week two will be the third to the ninth of April. No cold snap there. High pressure uh, is to the east, low pressure to the west and we keep wind coming up from a southerly, southeast, southwesterly, I should say, a direction. Week three <laughs> will be the uh, 10th to the 16th of April. Scandinavian high there. Winds coming in from probably not a particularly cold easterly direction. And then week four, well, as the CFS is consistently showing in the fourth week, but it never gets any closer, uh, we have got a, a colder scenario then. So this is the 17th to the 23rd of April. High pressure, dominant around green, proper blocking area of high pressure. I should try. Through the west of Europe, jet stream down there somewhere. So, uh, cold, colder and uh, unsettled as well by them. But that is into second half April. It's four weeks away and uh, it never seems within the CFS to get any closer. 
So let's wait and see what's going to happen. And uh, we should keep you posted. But again, a lot of uncertainty for this April, isn't there? Right, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know. Waving about this and all of our videos, content, live streams, etc., etc., etc. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals. Don't forget to subscribe too. And thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. It's absolutely awesome. Thank you so much. And if you want to see a little donation, Gals, well, that would be amazing as well. Right, thank you so much, everyone. Right, tomorrow, Gals, 6, 6 a.m. UK, both of us, Jamie Fry, Ted Walton, Dare, and the ECM at WF42 uh, Dare for UK and Ireland will be released tomorrow as well. So keep checking back to the channel for more. You enjoy the rest of your first day. And for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.